Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the struggles and challenges as a female engineer. So let's get started. Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you find it helpful and useful. And if you do, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. So I'm going to first start off with the fact that I never really wanted to become an engineer since I graduated. The only reason why I was is because my father was an electrical engineer and so I kind of was exposed to that area. Because I was exposed more towards like the engineering side of things, the analytical part, I decided to major in computer engineering. Like I said, it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. It's just something that was familiar more than anything else. However, little did I know when I actually went to school and I started, you know, getting my degree, I realized, wow, I'm part of the minority. For the first year or so, there was a lot more females. There's probably about 20 or so because most of them were common core classes that everyone had to take. But as you know, time went on, there was just fewer and fewer women. And eventually, I think there was a total of three other girls that I knew of. Uh, that were also majoring in computer engineering or electrical engineering. So if you're someone who is also interested in engineering and of course, you know, a female and would like to major in that field or you're already taking classes to get the degree, uh, but you don't know what it's like to actually be an engineer because you've never had an engineering job. Well, I hope this video will help shed some light on that area and to kind of explain what it's actually like being a female engineer in the workplace. So yeah, I'm gonna get to it. And the first thing that I noticed was not being heard. There were times in college where I knew the answer and I had given the answer, but the group that I was working with, they didn't really hear what I was saying. And so they continued to work and finally they came up with that same answer. Then they wrote it down and they're like, okay, great, we can go on to the next one. So little things like that, especially now um, as an engineer, when I give my thoughts about something, I feel as though I have to repeat it many times because it just doesn't seem like it catches on the first time, especially the ones that don't know me. Um, now the ones that do, they, they, you know, they take into consideration what I'm saying because they know the information that I know, but those who don't, I have to repeat myself, especially if I'm giving my thoughts about something. I kind of have to um, interject myself and say, hey guys, uh, I actually have this thought, what about this? Or ask questions just, you know, whenever I can fit them in. Otherwise, I do know for a fact that they will most likely not ask what I'm thinking or what I have thoughts about in this area or in this topic. So that's just something that I noticed as well. It's just you have to be uh, as a female, you have to be a bit more forward than the average person. And you also have to repeat yourself more often than not. I know it's very vague, but those are like the things that I kind of come across. And it's, it's very hard to pinpoint specific events because there are things that you just, you don't really know or think about until after the fact. And you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, I probably should have said that again. And other times where it's like, oh, they didn't ask me anything. Why is that? Like, I thought I was, knowledgeable in this area. Maybe maybe they just didn't know that. It's not like in the moment you're like, hey, what the heck, you're being an asshole, or hey, uh, you need to let me speak, or hey, you need to listen to me. It's more of like an afterthought, at least in my case. Now, it could also be a quality trait. It's just I know I'm very uh, reserved in general and just very to myself. It just could be the fact that I personally, as a individual, I need to just be more talkative, uh, be more um, outspoken and put myself out there more often. Um, and it feels like maybe it's more often than what I should, but it could just be the average amount that people would expect. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are experiencing that or you, you think you might be. The next one is not being able to relate to coworkers or your peers. It's just because they have their own way of communication. They're more straightforward about things and more like to the point. Now, females, in general obviously have more emotions and we we have a wider range of emotions uh, throughout the day throughout the week whatever throughout the month having to go through those moments of like very feeling very down or very mad or irritated and still trying to provide the same level of like consistent behavior and response to all of your team members yes that should be expected but it's just harder to do as a female but i make sure that i still have the same level of emotion or same level of output that I normally do. There are times where it's, it's just a real 
struggle to get to that same output if I'm just having a bad day. But if I'm having a good day, of course, it's easier to do. Now, again, I don't know if this is the case with males, but I feel as though, at least from my own experiences, they have more of a consistent emotional baseline. So it's not as difficult for them to get at that same output level for work, so for performance. Being able to have other, other females in the same workforce, it's a lot easier to detect when another one is feeling down for the day or is just feeling out of it. They might not be as bubbly or talkative as normal or they might be a little bit more passive than normal. As long as they're still doing their work, um, then that's fine. And it's just something about that, just being able to know that you're being heard. It's very comforting and you don't have to feel like you're alone, so to speak, and that'll just help you perform that much better and to be more consistent with your work. Because when I was getting my master's degree, I had moved positions from one internship in a certain area to another one. When I moved to that other one, everyone in that department was a male, um, except for the office admin assistant. I felt very, I guess, isolated and alone. It just was very demotivating. However, I also just didn't really like the work in general, but this was a different environment and an area where it's just like, I didn't feel comfortable to begin with. Whereas my first internship, the one who hired me, was a female and then she also had another girl who was working with her and then my manager was also a female. So it was a lot more inclusive in that area and I just felt a lot more at ease. And I also didn't really like the work that much either, but I didn't feel like that um, isolation or loneliness that I was feeling in that other internship. So those little things, um, they really impact you very much and it's very hard to overcome. You get used to it after a while, but luckily um, in this p current position, I have a manager who is female and I do have one other coworker who is also female. So it's great that they are there. I think that makes a tremendous difference when it comes to working and collaborating with others. That's just like my long way of saying, if you ever decide to uh, get an engineering degree and you are looking for a job, to find one that at least has maybe two or three other females or two or three other uh, women in the area, either in the group or a manager that's a female, whatever it may be, make sure you have at least some sort of interaction with another female. This leads on to the next one, which is that there's just not very many women in general in the engineering area. A statistic that I found online said that of 192,700 engineers, 13.7% are females while 86.3% are males. That's significant. And this was just like, I think this year, these were the, the numbers that they pulled. The engineering field is dominated by men. So um, if you're a woman, try to also be on the look for other females that you might potentially be working with when you look for a job. And the last one is you might not be seen as very smart or dumber than the other men in the room. Now this is a pretty bold statement, I, I'm aware of that, uh, but it's not something that I really experienced in college, more so that I experienced it um, in the workplace. It felt as though there was a lack of seriousness when it came to the projects that I was working on. It wasn't really significant to the company. In my previous internship, uh, the, th the work I was doing was actually helping the company. I was actually helping my coworkers, but this one, it was just side tasks it felt like that I was doing just to just busy work just to kill time and so it just felt they weren't taking it seriously and it could just be the fact that I was just an intern maybe all the interns in that department you know they treat them like that but for me it just felt like it was I was just wasting time and there were also meetings where I would kind of explain what I was working on or what I was doing and it just seemed like there was no actual seriousness in the meeting they weren't actually giving the level of you know thought into it or giving their actual critical um, thinking skills into it. And maybe I did sound dumb. Maybe what I was saying just didn't make any sense at the time because I really didn't know what I was talking about. So maybe there's that factor as well, but it's just something I think you should be aware of is um, if you go and get a job, make sure that those who you're working with, they don't treat you like that. They don't treat you like you're, you're dumber than others or you're dumber than them or you just don't know as much because you're a female. Now I could see if you are younger and you just started out, that's different. And maybe again, that could have been the case with me. It's because I'm an intern and so they just saw me as like, oh, well, she really doesn't know what she's doing. And they were kind of right, you know, but they didn't really have to be obvious about it. At the very least, make sure that those who are your coworkers in your group, they don't do any of that. But yeah, those are all the, the conflicts and things that I've come across. 
that have made it difficult to be a computer engineer. I hope you guys like this video and if you found it useful, please let me know in the comments section down below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more. Thank you for watching. Bye.